Today I've got three jackets to share. They're from the same pattern, but they're all different because the pattern has different views. If you've never sewn a jacket, this is an easy one that you can tackle. And if you've sewn many, then this could just be a really relaxing project. And I'm gonna be showing you how to sew the necklines. You can do them for sure, stay with me. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today I have some jacket sewing to share. Very excited to share because I wasn't really expecting to like this pattern as much as I did. Around the end of each month I choose three patterns and I set up a poll on the Orchid Tea on my Patreon page. The people that subscribe to that tea can choose and I do a full sew along. Every single month I have a hard time choosing because there's so much out there. Helen's Closet was having a site-wide sale and I saw the moss jacket. I put it on the poll and that is the pattern that went on Patreon. When I looked at the pictures it totally appealed to me for the casual aspect of this jacket, how easy it would be to wear. I I usually just make one garment and go from start to finish you know really good detail for this one I ended up wanting to make three because I thought why not you know I wanted several views I wanted to make one for my mom I wanted to make one for myself and then a little sleeveless hack you know they go adding on so if you look at the line out here you can see that it's really casual Although the lines look really boxy, it's not an oversized jacket at all. I wouldn't say you have to size down for this. Maybe if you wanted it to be more oversized, you would want to size up instead. It's got a drop shoulder. The sleeve can be long or it can be three quarters. And then the difference with the views is how the neckline is finished. On one you can see it's just really clean. It's an exposed facing actually. For view A, if you look at the pictures on the website and the, the way it's supposed to fit, it's not supposed to reach the center. And then view B is the one that I really, really liked. It's a really wide collar piece, like really wide that you sew on. Very similar to when you're sewing cardigans. If you've sewn the Blackwood cardigan from Helen's Closet or any other long line cardigan that finishes the band, the technique is very similar. It's just that this is woven and it's wider. So you fold it and it looks sort of like a short collar, but it's not and it's folded all the way to the hem. We top stitched super neatly. There's patch pockets on both views. They're sewn slightly differently because of the neckline finish for each view. The back is cut on the fold. There is a yoke piece that's double. Burrito method encloses the seams here on the shoulders and the back. And also the technique is a little different for view A and B because of the way the neckline is finished. So for both views, A and B, on the same pattern pieces, you have either a shorter cut line for a shorter jacket or a longer cut line for a longer jacket. I ended up customizing the length of all the ones I made to sort of in the middle of both of these lengths because one was just way too short for me and the other one was just way too long. And I always think you can do that in sewing. You can have a lot of fun with that. In the pattern, there's a lot of fabrics mentioned here and they even go as far as to recommend the types of fabrics for each view. So for view A, which is the one with the exposed facing, they recommend you use drapier, sort of flowier fabrics for that one. Your rayon twill, your tensile twill, crepe type of fabrics that are a bit more flowy. And for view B, which has the folded collar, they recommend you use more structured fabrics. So you can see I have a list here on my graphic of fabrics that are a little bit more structured, like wool, like denim, linen. I think any fabrics will work for either or. For view B that has the folded collar, it is partially interfaced, so that's good. It's gonna give it structure anyway. For the three jackets I made, I chose linen rayon blends. Two of them are 55% linen, 45% rayon, and there's one of them that is 70% rayon, 30% linen. So it's a little flowier and I did actually make view B with the folded collar with that one and it turned out amazing even if the fabric is a little drapier it's amazing. I would say though for view A which is the one that looks a little simpler here on the center front is to avoid using a fabric where the wrong side is awful that you don't like like it's got a really ugly wrong side because basically if the wind moves and, and this opens up a little, you're gonna see the wrong side there right away. And that's because the facing is towards the outside of the garment. Of course, you would understitch to keep the wrong side inside. There is the chance that, you know, in your life, when you're moving, the wind, you know, that you will see the wrong side of the fabric, you know, a little bit. So if you really, really dislike it, I would say just don't use a fabric like that for view A. For view B, the one with the folded collar, it doesn't really matter how the wrong side looks because it's all tucked inside and no one's gonna see it. The sizing is available from zero to 34 US. That goes up to a 60 inch chest and a 62 inch hip. It doesn't give you the finished garment measurements here, like circumference of the bust, the waist, the hips, because, well, for view A, 
if you look at the pictures on the website and the, the way it's supposed to fit, it's not supposed to reach the center. For view B, which has the folded collar, that one does reach the center, but it doesn't overlap or anything. So I would say that the ease is not a lot. That's why I'm saying this is not an oversized jacket, although the style looks a little boxy, but it's not oversized. So maybe if you do want it oversized, size up one, but definitely don't think, oh, this looks like it's gonna be big, you know, don't size down, just choose your size and you'll be absolutely fine. That's what I did for me, for my mom the same. For my mom, I chose a 14 blended into a 12 hip. My mom has a different type of body shape to me. Her measurements proportionally are smaller in her lower section and larger here, like an inverted triangle type situation. It's definitely easy to do, just blend the line in slightly, very easy. And for me, I just did a straight size 18. I wanted to make a test garment, of course. I made one for myself just to get a general idea of the ease. Let me show you my muslin. This is my quick dirty muslin for view A. This is the one that doesn't have that collar that's folded. So what this has is an exposed facing right here. So I'm actually gonna miss a little bit of the width here from the seam allowance, but that is the intended fit. If you look at the product listing, it's got a gap that it's not supposed to close in or crossover. I think the hip is fine if I turn sideways. Now this jacket has no shaping so of course I have extra fabric there. I've got the long sleeve here. I've already got the hem folded up. It's extremely long on me like it's way too long and I know it's supposed to be like on the product pictures you see this styled like this. Everyone's modeled photos uh, with it folded up a few times like this but I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I want to wear it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I have to think about that. Otherwise, if I want to wear my sleeve just normal, just regular hem, I would have to shorten it at least one and a half inches because look at this. Now, there is a shorter cut line here on the pattern. So that would be where the hem ends on the other version. And that would finish about two inches below my elbow. It would be sort of like a three quarter length. And for wider sleeves like this, I think I prefer a shorter length than the full length. I think this amount of fabric just swallows my arm. Do want this area showing through, just to contrast to the boxiness of the jacket. So I'll probably end up doing the three quarter length there. So there's a yoke sewn right there. With the other collar, the one that's wider and then it's folded over, with that one you will actually get the full coverage here on the front. So I sort of prefer that version. I wouldn't mind doing one without the sleeve and just I wanted to see the finished length. Now, I've got the raw edge of the fabric. I should fold it up by at least two inches and that would be super short for me. So I'm probably gonna lengthen the pattern piece. You know what I have to do? This was helpful and super fast to whip up. So I made that muslin using the short cut line. So for the short jacket, folding up the hem allowance, I thought, yeah, this is way too short for what I want. So I just decided to add four inches from the shorter cut line down. That means my jacket's gonna be four inches longer. That's all. <laughs> so if you make any adjustments to the length of your front and your back pattern pieces, make sure you also adjust the exposed facing if you're doing view A or the collar piece if you're doing view B. It will be included in the total length. So whatever change you make there, take your other pieces and make the change there. The sewing, I have a lot to say. The main seam allowance is 5 eighths of an inch unless stated otherwise. So most of the seams are sewn with 5 eighths. Although there are some where you have to stay stitch at half an inch, certain areas of the facings are folded in by a quarter of an inch. You do have to pay attention to that and concentrate on the instructions so you don't make mistakes. I want to show you a summary of the sewing. Of course, I won't show you the whole thing that is on my Patreon page. Just know for sure that the first steps I did before sewing anything was stay stitch. The necklines here of the yoke, I did that for all my versions. I did sort of cut these out all together and I was sort of batch sewing them, just changing the color of the thread when I needed to and it made the process much more streamlined for me. One thing that I enjoyed about the order of the instructions here was that one of the first steps was to create memory creases for the hems at the bottom and the sleeves. I think that's really good. Sometimes you don't see that in patterns. It's just like you leave the hems for the end and, and go for it. But when you're folding your hem up twice, one by a tiny amount and then one by a larger amount, it's so much easier to do when your pieces are flat. I think that when you finally get to the hem, having it all done and pressed just makes it so much easier. So I really like that. As usual, I like to block fuse the pieces that need to be, but sometimes it's not that straightforward. So I'm going to show you how I'm interfacing the large collar piece for view B. You only interface half of it. 
and also how I'm interfacing the top part of all these patch pockets. I'm cutting out my pattern pieces and this piece you see here is the collar that goes on view B. It's a really wide collar that goes folded in half. Basically this top edge there, that is the pattern piece right there and you're supposed to cut it on the fold like that and I really don't like cutting long pieces on the fold like that. But then you have another pattern piece that is just for the interfacing here and they're basically identical. <laughs> So all I did was tape it there along and now that's the way I've doubled up my piece. I don't have to put it on the fold anymore and I can just cut it twice. So that's what I have there. I do want to interface the half of this collar piece as per the instructions. So I've put this there and behind here I've drawn a line on my fabric. So I'm going to take interfacing and align it right there on the line and just interface all of this. One half on one side and the same on the other. I also have the line on the other side so I have that reference. And you can see I'm still block fusing because this piece of fabric is like slightly larger. So once I've got the interfacing there I'm just going to align the middle here where I have the join of the two pattern pieces right against the edge of the interfaced area and then I'm going to cut it out and then I'm going to have my two collar pieces half of it interfaced while block fusing little slightly modified block fusing but I know if I cut it out and then I cut the interfacing and then fuse it on half of this might end up pulling and turning out shorter here on the edges compared to the side that's not interfaced. Here I'm at the eye end just fusing on the interfacing that will be on half of this collar lengthwise matching up the straight line that I cut from my interfacing with the line I marked on the fabric. I'm doing this on both sides. After ironing I've put my pattern piece on top matching the center here lengthwise with the interfacing I have on the bottom and now I can cut it doing it in a single layer for accuracy because I really want to match the middle where the interfacing is on both sides. I really can't see what's underneath so I'd rather do it in a single layer. The pockets for view A and B are similar but they are a little bit different. What they have in common though is these notches there and that's where you're going to fold it on the top and it recommends interfacing this area if your fabric is floppy. I think you should just interface any pocket so that it doesn't turn out floppy. You know, this is linen rayon, it could flop if you don't interface that. So what I've done here is very similar to what I did with the collar pieces. I want to block fuse before I cut out my pocket. So I just got a larger piece of fabric here. I put my pattern piece there and at the notches on both sides I drew a line. So you can see the white line right there on both sides. Then I've cut some interfacing to match that line. I'm going to fuse that interfacing on. Once that's on, then I'm going to come and align the pocket piece, aligning these marks right there where the interfacing is. Same process. Here is my pocket. I have already interfaced that on there. I've got them the same. This is a smaller piece, so I'm really sure that the interfaced edges are right on top of each other there on both layers. So now I'm just going to cut this together. You're going to see some pattern pieces for view B. I'm going to go into depth about them in a little bit, but I just wanted to touch on the topic of seam finishes. The way I'm going to sew the sleeves in on the flat and the side seams later means that I want to finish these seams before sewing anything at all, so let's see that. Due to the way I'm going to finish the side seams and sew the sleeves in on the flat, I am going to actually finish all the side seams first. All of that seam, that long seam right there, this one here, both of course. I'm also going to search the size of the sleeves like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of that. This is another VB. It's the one I'm making my mum and I'm going the extra mile with hers and I'm going to bind all the edges. So for the sleeves, you have to bind everything. The sides, the top and the side. The bottom is left raw because that's going to be the hem. That was super easy to do. You know, once you're done with your serger, you don't use it up until the very end again. So. Just go ahead and serge everything and it will make everything so much easier later on. For my mom's jacket I wanted to go the extra mile and I didn't want to just serge the edges, I wanted to bind them. And I'm just going to show you the way I do it. It's very easy, very approachable, just some criteria and just choose when certain things that are easier are appropriate and when they're not. Just a little clip now showing you what I'm going to do and how and why and when I wouldn't do it like that. I'm going to show you quickly how I'm going to bind all the edges for this jacket. So I have my bias tape that I made years ago. I made yards of this. I have a video on the channel of how you can make continuous uh, yardage. And this is a really nice cotton. The finished width here is three quarters of an inch. And there we have one fold 
and the other fold. For this one, I use the bias tape maker that says 18 at the back. And so I'm gonna be folding it like that to bind this. I've had some comments on the channel before telling me you're doing it wrong. Well, you know, there's nothing that's wrong <laughs> in sewing. Traditional way would have you align this raw edge here to your garment and you would sew right there where the fold is all along. So if I were doing it like this, I would place my binding on the wrong side of the fabric. And then once that's sewn, just symbolized with pins right now, then you would wrap around like this come over to the front, to the right side of the fabric, and then you would stitch. And I mean, this is how I would do necklines and armholes. It is a way that is correct. But if you are going to do long, long seams, and you're gonna be doing this a lot, this takes a long time. It's two steps, basically, sew it once, flip it, and then sew it again. It can take a long time. And you don't really need to do that. I mean, if you're working with bias tape made out of cotton, it's really stable and easy to work with. So. All I do is fold it in half like this, so I have both folds there, fold it again, and then I just sandwich my fabric inside, I just wrap it around like this, and I pin, and I just sew it in one go. I mean, it's easy, easy, easy. If you want to make it even easier, you can go to the iron and fold your bias tape in half before, and then it's much easier. I'm not doing that here. You can bind long sections of fabric this way much faster. The goal of binding is to protect the raw edges. So whether you do one seam, flip it, and then sew again, or just do it in one go and wrap it in one step, you're still gonna get a raw edge that is protected. So then you just sew and you keep removing your pins and voila, you have bound edges. I've caught the seams on both sides. You know, this is linen, this is cotton. It's gonna be super easy for you to just fold, pin and sew without any hand basting. If I was trying to bind slippery fabric or my bias tape was made out of silk or chiffon or something, then I wouldn't do it like this. I would definitely hand baste and do it in two steps just to ensure that both sides get sewn. When you can make your life easier and you're working with fabric that is easy to handle and manage, this way is gonna work just as well, and this is the way I'm gonna bind my mom's blue jacket. I don't think it's a wrong way to do it. It is a way that is going to protect the raw edges and still look neat, so that's the way I've done it. Before going into the sewing sewing, I also wanted to show you my needle and stitch length. I'm using linen, so this universal needle number 90 or 14 is gonna work very well, so that's what I'm gonna use. For medium weight fabrics, I just use a straight stitch and my preferred length is 3.0, but that's just personal preference. I know some people like it shorter. I just like how this looks with the tension. That's just my preferred stitch length. When I top stitch, I make it even longer and I put it to 3.5. Because view A and view B are so different, I made little summaries for each one, focusing on the neckline. So first we're gonna see view A, which is the simpler version with the exposed facing. So let's see. These are the pattern pieces for view A. Here we have a front piece, it's slightly curved like that. Here's the shape around here is the waist, down here is the hip. And the piece that you see there that's interfaced is the exposed facing that's gonna finish it from here. So this is a type of shoulder seam right there. And then for the back, this is the same as view B. You have a yoke, it's cut twice because it's gonna have a burrito method or enclosed. My back, these are all cut on the fold. The pockets for view A are actually sewn into the side seam for most of the sizes. And then they don't reach the edge because then that facing is gonna cover them there. Here you don't see the sleeve pieces. This one is gonna be sleeveless, but that's just gonna be a it's not the original design. To the neckline for view A, this just finishes the front because the back is finished with a double layer of the yoke. So this is only for the front piece. At one point it's straight all the way down, but here you have a slight curve. I'm just gonna mirror these. We have those little angles here together and these outer edges. Those are the ones where I'm going to do a guide stitch and then press in. I'm gonna put a pin there so I don't get confused. For this area, the seam allowance to fold in is only a quarter of an inch. So I'll be using my quarter inch presser foot to sew right there with a long stitch length. What I have on the table are the two front pieces. This is the neckline here, this is the side seam. I've got them wrong sides up. You can see my memory creases there from the hem at the bottom. That needs to be extended. So don't fold these up, just extend them like that. And now we're gonna take these and match them. Now, you can see that little shape there? 
that is the exact same shape you're gonna have over there on the top so it's really easy to match them up so both of these pieces are wrong sides up the front and this facing so I've got it pinned from the top you can see that little angle right there all the way down to the bottom unfolding these memory creases we've done for the hem so throughout the instructions you'll see different seam allowances used for different areas it uses a 5-8 seam allowance unless stated otherwise we're just going to trim that in half it really does not need to be there and the stitching is done a little bit different because this is an exposed facing. This exposed facing is going to be flipped over to the right side of the garment. So this is the visible side and that's where we're going to top stitch. But before that we need to understitch. So usually in regular facings that are tucked in towards the inside of the garment, you push the seam allowance underneath the facing, right? And then you sew on the edge. But in this case we need to do the opposite. So we need to tuck the seam allowance underneath the main piece so this has to be totally extended here the facing then this is where we do the under stitching right here so that when this is folded like this this gets tucked in underneath i've swapped my presser foot to the blind hand presser foot with a needle to the left remember this is the wrong side of the fabric here and this is the right side of the fabric on the facing so that's why we're top stitching there because it's the wrong side of the fabric that we don't want seen okay so this is one of the fronts this is the right side of the fabric we have our little pockets right there and now we have this facing you can see how this now covers that raw edge of the pocket that we had from previously see easy peasy i'm gonna press this flat all the way up the top remember there's a slight curve here and then to finish this we sew on the edge here are the front pieces again now they are both right sides up the main and then the facing is right sides up of course was sewn onto the wrong side and then flipped forward i've still got my blind hem presser foot there from when i did the under stitching so i'm just going to keep it there to do this top stitching here on the edge it always gives you a really really professional look super straight stitching without doing much effort little midway interruption here so what you're going to see next is the whole burrito roll already done i'm not going to insert that again over and over and over because it's always the same thing i have a full video on the channel showing you how to do this type of burrito roll so we're going to pick up when the roll is already done and we're ready to sew that shoulder seam there with the roll already done and then we'll see what happens with the back which is really cool let's see we're going to finally see the inner yoga that's right here we're just going to bring it over and meet the shoulder seams right there. That's our burrito roll, align the shoulder seams. Okay, so I wanted to show you what happens here up closer and not on the big table. So we have pinned the shoulder seams like that. This seam is gonna include these two layers of the yoke right here. This is how the back neckline is finished. And that's why you had extra seam allowance hanging off here. If I open this up, you can see that the front is in there by five eighths of an inch, a little further in. So I have drawn a dot there. This is where I'm gonna pivot. If I touch there, that's where the front is reaching. So I've done the same here on this side. There is my dot. So it'll be one continuous seam, across the shoulder to the dot, pivot, go around the neckline, pivot, and then finish the shoulder. And then we can take all of it out through here. Very different than the typical in closing of seams. The seam allowance is 5 8 here, which I think is a little hard to manage on the curve of the neckline. I'll just go slow. There you can see it was done in one go, pivoting right there at the points that i drawn, where the front meets in there. It's 5 8 seam allowance everywhere. And now again, I'm going to trim away bulk. Here where we have the curve, we of course want to snip into there so that we can turn these right sides out nice and neat. Okay, and so from one of these, it doesn't matter which side, we're going to take everything out. Okay, so here we have it. This is the back neckline. You can see the front comes from within these two. It's very neat. I really like this. 
Mine is super contrasty. <laughs> so at this point, I don't think I can go in there and understitch comfortably because I would like to do that. But I really don't have space to go in there with the sewing machine and do that. So what I'm going to do is just when I press, I'm just going to roll the seam with my hands to the inside so that it is like a sixteenth of an inch to the inside. And then I might do some top stitching just right there to make sure that the wrong side is never seen when I wear the jacket. I went ahead and sewed the side seam and pressed it open and I tried it on again just to make sure I was happy. You know, this is designed to have a sleeve so the opening is going to be longer here. But because I want it sleeveless, I'm actually going to just sew about two inches higher right here. Then I have already pressed this. Now look, this is straight. There's no armhole curve and such. And on this rare exception, I am perfect happy to just fold this in and top stitch. I would never do that if there was an armhole curve but it's not the case here so it makes a sleeveless modification super super easy. Okay this is the opening of this armhole which is actually just a straight line there. I'm just going to use a 3 8 seam allowance here to top stitch and I'm starting somewhere around the back. When I get to this V part I'm going to go down a little about five eighths of an inch and then pivot and then I'm going to have a short little straight seam here to get to the other side. Pivot again and then start going up again. I'm going to show you my view A. This is a linen, it's navy. I used another fabric inside for my inner yoke. This is my outer yoke right there. Two things, I didn't have enough of a navy fabric. <laughs> Partially the reason why I used an inner yoke. Also, it's easier to film the tutorial when I'm doing the burrito roll and everything. And I made my sleeveless. This is the exposed facing right there. You sew it onto the wrong side and then you flip it and you top stitch it. And it goes all the way down, including the hem. This middle section here, I finished by hand right there. And then all the rest is done with a the machine. These pockets are patch pockets. They're super easy to do. On this view A, it's caught in the side seam there. But then it's not caught in the center front because then it's covered by the facing. If you're sewing larger sizes from 22 up, then the pocket finish is a little different. You would have to finish this edge of the pocket and it would be away from the seam a little just because the pattern pieces are a little bit wider. So you find that in the instructions, but mine is a size 18 and I was still able to fit it here. Mine is longer, four inches longer. The pocket placement on the jacket was just way too high for me. I feel like, you know, like T-Rex have their hands like this. I feel like I'm trying to do this to get into pockets when they're so high up there. So I always feel that pockets are a personal preference where you want them to be. So my jacket was longer, my pockets came down to where I feel they're comfortable. So you can play with the pocket pulling it up and down, but not where it's placed because it has to be on the side seam and it has to be away from the center front by a little bit. At the back is just one piece. And look, this is completely straight here. So finishing this here was very, very easy. I love how that back neckline is finished, how you get such a clean edge with just the two layers of the yoke. I think it's great, it's really non-bulky, easy to do, all in one go, love that. Here is the inside, you saw it was so easy to do, it's like doing your typical burrito roll that leaves the shoulders for the end, and then sewing all of this in one go, that's why this edge was shorter from the edge when you do the first step, but it's so easy and I can see myself doing this same technique with other patterns that have a similar feature. I really love this. I know I'm going to wear it a lot. I have already worn this out and I wore it in the same way I chose to take the pictures here. And it's over my Nioka dress from Sinclair Patterns. Love the combination there. I love this one. I never thought I was going to love it so much. And even though it doesn't go all the way to the center, I think it's fine. It's like a lighter layer. I feel it's not going to make me too hot, it's going to be just right. This is my navy blue moss jacket. This is view A, it's slightly different in the center front. You see when I get further away that it's got the same modified length between the short length and the longer length option. But this is view A, which has an exposed facing. It doesn't reach the center, it's not supposed to. I omitted to sew the sleeves on here, so I have a sleeveless hack. 
very easy to do and you can see the exposed facing there on the front it's very neat very easy to do and at the back you have two layers for the yoke all the seams are enclosed and it's a very neat finish I'm surprised I like this version a lot I thought I was gonna like view B best but I like this one as well and the finish for the armholes there was very easy to do because that area is just straight. Nice little patch pockets for decoration and this is a great little cover up for the hotter weather. I'm, I know I'm gonna wear this a lot, <laughs> love it. Now we're going to see a little summary of UB, the pattern pieces and how to sew on this big collar. As I mentioned before, if you've sewn cardigans, this will be very familiar. Although I'm not doing it exactly the same, I'm doing a different finish at the center front for the hem. Could be a little neater, so let's see, it's a very short clip. Here I have the pieces for view B. They are the same pieces, the yokes, the back on the fold, the front, they are the same. I have a sleeve that's gonna be three quarters. That is the sleeve piece there. The pocket is different for view B. This pocket is gonna reach the center front right there and is not gonna be caught in the side seam, so that's different and it's a different pocket piece. And then the neckline is finished with this big piece. You just saw me interfacing this one. It's gonna have a center back seam right there. I've already got it pinned together and only half of it is interfaced right there, the other half isn't. So that is the main difference. I am gonna show you how to sew both views because I wanna make both views. <laughs> Here's the shoulder seam, everything's enclosed just like before, but we still have our layers here, normal. This raw edge matches this raw edge and this is because this is all gonna be caught up in the seam where we sew the wide collar piece. Here we have this big collar piece for view B. Remember we had just interfaced half of it all the way down and we have a center back seam. So we're gonna sew that first and then press it open. Here it is pressed very neatly. So what we do now at the bottom is place these right sides together like this and sew both of these ends. Both of these ends, just fold them right sides together. Now we're going to flip this to the right side and then we can head to the iron and press this whole collar lengthwise in half. Okay, here it is, nicely pressed in half lengthwise, a pretty long piece. We have our center seam. When we open it, we're going to find some marks. I've got them in blue right there and in white right there. These are going to match some of the yoke seams. Now the instructions don't specify what side of the collar goes against the right side of the jacket, whether it's the non-interface side or the interface side. I wanna place the non-interface side touching the right side of the jacket. So just like this, non-interfaced, right sides, and then you have the interface side. That is the way that it's gonna work out so that the visible part of the collar is the nice smooth interface side. So we're just gonna align this at the center back with that seam. Then moving this way, we have those little marks inside the jacket. I'm gonna put a pin right there. That is gonna match this seam of the yoke right there, the shoulder seam. And then these are gonna match this shoulder seam right here. Then we're gonna keep pinning this all the way down, one center front right here, and then on the other side as well. Here we're gonna catch the pocket that's right on the edge. Now one way you can do this is hem this before, so you would have this hemmed already, and then this edge that's finished would meet right there, and you would have to be really, really careful about having these perfectly together there so that you don't have one that's longer than the other. So then you would just sew from here and go all the way around to the other side, and then that would give you this look right there. Now another way to do it, it's the way I want to do it, is to wait until the end to sew the hem. So make this reach the fold of the hem right there, that crease. Bring this hem over like this, wrapping it around. So then we will sew it like this. And then when we flip it, we would get a really clean look like that, where this is coming from behind that hem. I think this is just neater. So let's just go ahead and sew this 
really long seam at 5 8 Okay, so there it is. It was pretty long. <laughs> it's all good. And now I'm going to serge that. I'm going to trim it down a little bit while I'm serging. And then when you flip it, this is going to be super neat like that. This is going to help the seam go towards the jacket as it should. And you have the hem coming above it. I think it's a very neat look on the front there. And you're not going to have seam allowances right there. Like you would if you hemmed at first and then sewed all the layers together. Here is my brown jacket. Now I had a hard time finding the right amount. Because let me tell you, this collar piece, this white piece, takes up a lot of yardage. So for the blue one, I didn't need much yardage at all. Just Keep that in mind when you choose what view you want to sew on, how much fabric you have because it's a bit fabric hungry. The, the collar piece is wide, it's on the fold so it ends up being a very big piece. You have to cut it twice so yeah. Anyway, this is a fabric I had a lot of yardage of. Look at all this embroidery detail on this linen blend. It's so beautiful. I love that and I think it adds something special to this jacket. You know, it is a sort of simple design, so the fact that there's a little embroidery in the solid just gives it all that extra that I need to motivate me to sew a solid, you know? So it's all the same to the blue one I've shown you, only this one has the sleeves, super easy to sew, you sew them on the flat, although I sew these a little differently, I'll talk about that in a second. And the collar piece is just really wide, sewn just like you would a cardigan, although this is one-to-one, -one. you don't have to stretch anything like you do with cardigans. You saw that I sewed that different there so that it's neater here and you don't have the seam allowance coming all the way down. In this view B, different to view A, the pocket does reach this center front seam there and then is caught in the seam of the collar, but then at the sides, it doesn't reach the side seam. I also did the same type of contrast yoke in there. This burrito method is straightforward. You just do the burrito roll without including the back neckline. And so you can get two raw edges there that are then caught in the collar. It's all top stitched after sewing it on to keep it flat. And it's a very, very nice clean finish. This is a great transitional type of weather garment where it's not too cold, not too hot. For summer or hotter weather, I would definitely prefer this one because there's less fabric around the neckline. So it makes it less hot, but this is Really, really cool. Let's see it on. This is my moss jacket. It's also a length between the shorter and the longer option. I used a brown embroidered linen. And you can see I've got the wide collar option. I've also used the three quarter length sleeve and you'll see the details up closer. Here you can see that this collar is just a really wide piece that is folded over. Sort of looks like a short collar, but it's not and it's super easy to sew. I have patch pockets there and the fit is relaxed, but it's not extremely boxy either. It's not fitted at all. I used the size I was supposed to here, didn't size up or down. It's a really neat and clean finish inside, very easy to sew drop type of shoulders. I think a three quarter length will serve me better. And at the back you have a yoke that is in a double layer or burritoed or enclosed and very neat inside. That is a casual style that is gonna be super easy to wear. Now I haven't shown how to sew the sleeves in on the flat or the side seams here at all. I actually did it quite different than when you see in the instructions. In the instructions you would just sew on the sleeve flat and then pick up and sew this seam of the sleeve and the side seam at the same time and do a snip there to relieve the tension. And that is not a technique I would ever want to do because I think it's really bulky and really uncomfortable can limit your range of movement especially in the drop shoulder style so I did mine different it's still very very easy but it leaves the seam allowances sort of free inside without them being sewn together I will show this technique in another jacket pattern video review I've got coming up 
where I've sewn it like that and it's the same way I've sewn it here. So you will see how to do it. The finish inside is so much nicer. The third one, I don't have it right here for you to see right now because I made it for my mom. She has already left, returned back to her home with my dad and so she's taken it. And the same day when she was leaving, I just filmed it out here. Now, if you hear the audio is a little different, I was so flustered, I put the microphone on the other way around. So the audio might be a little bit different, but you can still hear what I'm saying. You'll see the details and the binding and it's very nice. This is my mom's jacket. It's the most gorgeous shade of blue, three quarter length sleeves, regular hem in there. This fabric is so nice to work with. And we have the version that has the wide collar. So you fold it over. Sort of looks like a short collar, but it's not. And it goes folded all the way down to there. Those are the patch pockets right there. But the special thing I did with this one was that I bound all the seams instead of serging. So it's really nice. I've had this cotton for ages. I had already made lots of yardage of this bias tape from this cotton. Same one I used for the yolks. I think it matches the blue really nicely. Seams of the sleeves also have the bound edges. And here you can see the intersection of seams, how all the seam allowances are free. There's nothing caught in there. So even though the sleeve is on the flat, you still get a lot of good mobility here with this one. She loves it. She loves the casual style. She's going to travel with this. Let's see it on. Here is my mom's view B from the moss jacket. Another linen blend in blue. She chose it herself from my stash. And it's a really nice casual jacket for her. She dresses quite casually in jeans like this, just like you see her now. And there's the folded collar, I think is very beautiful. I thought I liked view B better than view A when I started sewing, but I actually like both versions here. This is a three quarter length sleeve and what I've done inside with hers, I've bound all the edges there and I think it looks really nice with that contrast cotton inside. Just something special for her special jacket because I pull out all the stops when I sew for my mum. <laughs> Love how it looks on her. She loved the jacket, she just didn't want to take it off and she told me she was going to travel with that. She actually did, she got dressed up that morning and just put it on and off she went in the plane with her jacket. She loves it, loves it, so that makes me super happy. She loves that casual style and that folded collar. Now for that one in the pattern, there's another option to finish this folded collar. And what you saw there is sewing it all together, like cardigan style. So you do have a surged edge in there. You don't see it when you wear it because everything's folded over and that's very much inside. But there is another way where you can enclose all the seams. See the instructions and that's the way I've done it for her. But it's not the one I shared here on the summary. But just know that there's another way that's lengthier to do, a lot more, <laughs> takes a longer time. And you know, to be honest, this is just as nice. I would just finish it like this and it would be just as acceptable. I just went the extra mile and did it the other way that takes more steps because I'd already put so much work into the binding and I really didn't want to have any surged edges in there. So I did it the alternative method in the pattern that just hides all the seams. So remember, there is another jacket I'm going to review and show. I'm going to share the little trick that gives you a nice finish inside you know, without the bulk when you sew sleeves in on the flat like that. And that's coming very soon. I have two more jackets to share, actually. I've already sewn them up. I'm just getting those videos ready for you. That's all from me today. Have an amazing weekend. I'll see you again very soon. Bye.